Make Yourself at Home, Inclusive Tourism Training. Be Communication Confident, Session 3 of 3. Communicating Confidently with Different People. Be Communication Confident is a short online training program that will help build your confidence to provide inclusive customer service. It focuses on communication as the starting point for helping your disabled customers feel they belong and can be themselves when they are with you. There are three sessions. This is session three. In this session, we will explore communicating confidently with people with hearing loss, sign language users, people with sight loss, guide dog users, people who use augmentative and alternative communication, autistic people, and people who have non-visible disabilities. Communicating confidently with people with hearing loss. Different people with hearing loss have different levels of hearing. Some also experience other sounds in their ears. People may not say that they have hearing loss. Some people use hearing aids and some hearing aids are so small you cannot see them easily. Having a hearing aid does not mean the wearer now has good hearing. So stay alert to the possibility that someone is not hearing everything you are saying. People with different hearing loss have different communication needs, so it's always best to ask what works for them and follow their advice. There are some good practice tips on the next two slides, yet not all will apply to all people with hearing loss. Stand in front of the person and speak clearly. Don't shout, it looks aggressive and can be uncomfortable for hearing aid users. Stand in good lighting and use normal facial expressions. You can use waving or pointing to get someone's attention or illustrate directions. Most people with hearing loss lip read, so keep your hands away from your mouth. If you can, move to a space that is quieter or has less echo. If you are not understood, think of a different way to explain rather than repeating the same words. Use a pen and paper, a digital screen or phone to write out what you want to say. Use plain language and get to the point. Having clear information printed or on screen, menus, price lists, maps and so on, reduces what people need to ask and gives you visual support for your answers. Communicating confidently with sign language users. People who use sign language form a distinct language and cultural community. Many sign language users refer to themselves as deaf with a capital D, to express pride in their deaf identity. Like spoken word, there is not one international sign language. Different people use different sign languages. In Belfast, British Sign Language, known as BSL, and Irish Sign Language, known as ISL, are commonly used, although they do not originate from spoken English or Irish. Here are some good practice tips for communicating with sign language users. Let the deaf person take the lead. This is their everyday experience and they know what works. Have paper, a tablet or phone handy so you can both use it to write or type or draw pictures. Write in plain language as English is a second language for most sign users. 
Sign language users are visual people. They use their face and hands to communicate. So use clear gestures and facial expressions. A clear miming action can help get a point across. And have patience and resist the urge to give up when misunderstandings happen. Keep trying. When talking through a sign language interpreter, you should look at the deaf person while you're talking because it's them you're having the conversation with. The deaf person will look at the interpreter to see what you're saying. They will look at you when they're assigning what it is that they want to say. You can find and book a registered British or Irish sign language interpreter through the National Register of Communication Professionals working with deaf and deaf-blind people. Communicating confidently with people with sight loss. Most people with a visual impairment or sight loss are over 65. This is because sight loss is strongly associated with ageing and eye diseases are the most common reason for sight loss. The degree of sight loss varies depending on the eye condition. People can experience loss to their central vision, which impacts the detail they can see. People also experience loss to their visual field, which affects how much they can see around the edge of their vision. Most people who have a lifelong eye condition are registered as sight impaired or severely sight impaired. Usually, people registered sight impaired can read text. They may use a magnifying glass or find large text with extra line spacing helpful. The description severely sight impaired does not mean that a person cannot see anything but that their vision is so impaired that they need a lot of help perceiving images. Here are some good practice tips for communicating with people with sight loss. Introduce yourself by name directly to the person. Let them know you're there if they need you. If they do need help, ask how you can help. Speak at a natural pitch and speed. And be clear and thorough when you describe things or places. Your workplace may have different tools or information in different formats that you can share. Large print, a screen you can zoom in on, or even a magnifying glass. Give people time. People with visual impairment usually need extra time to work through text. Don't worry about using words to do with vision, colour or shapes. Saying look or describing something as a red flag are part of everyday conversation and won't cause offence. And let people know when you've finished the conversation and are moving away. Guiding people. If someone asks you to guide them, ask them how they'd like to be guided. Most often they will ask to take your arm just above the elbow. Your elbow should be bent and they will let you walk ahead of them, but check first. As you walk, tell them about changes in levels or steps as you approach. Say if you're going up or down and guide them to the handrail. Give instructions and flag any hazards, but you don't need to talk all the time. Don't leave someone you're guiding standing alone in free space. And always say you're leaving before you walk away. If guiding someone to a seat, describe its height, its arms, if it is on wheels and what is in front of it. Guide their hand to the back of the seat so they can orientate themselves before they start to sit. Communicating confidently with guide dog users. Guide dogs are working dogs. 
If they are wearing their harness, then they're on duty. Do not pet them, talk to them, feed them or distract them while they are working. Guide dogs will usually sit quietly next to their owner. Always ask the owner if you may stroke a non-working dog. Know where the dog bowl is kept so you can offer to fetch a drink of water. This applies to medical alert dogs, autism dogs and hearing dogs. Communicating confidently with people who use augmentative and alternative communication. Augmentative and alternative communication, known as AAC for short, means different ways of communicating besides talking. It is used by people who cannot rely on their speech some or all of the time and they may use AAC to add to or instead of speech. Some people may use a technology such as a speech generating device or an app on an iPad or smartphone. People may also use no tech or low tech options such as gestures, facial expression, writing, drawing or spelling words by pointing to letters. Here are some examples of AAC. Here are some good practice principles for communicating with an AAC user. Communicate with the person, not the device. Respect screen privacy, unless you're invited to look. Use usual eye contact, body language and speech. Ask one question at a time. Check you have understood correctly. Be patient. Technology doesn't always work perfectly. And be sure the user is done speaking before you move on. Communicating confidently with autistic people. Autism affects how people communicate and interact with the world. It affects different people in different ways. An autistic person may need extra time to process information. They may find it difficult to filter out less important information. They may experience anxiety in social situations or with unexpected changes. They may find noise, smells and bright lights painful and distressing and they may become overwhelmed and experience a meltdown or shutdown. Here are some good practice tips for communicating with autistic customers. Say less and say it slowly. Use short, clear statements. Ask few questions. Keep them short and specific. Avoid sarcasm, exaggeration and non-literal expressions as autistic people may take them literally. Reduce your non-verbal communication such as eye contact, facial expressions and gestures. If someone seems anxious, ask if you can help and how. And offer a quiet, safe space if you have one. Communicating confidently with people with non-visible disabilities. The barriers that people with non-visible disabilities face may be difficult to recognise. As with any customer, ask if and how you can help. Then listen, be flexible and do what is asked. Here are some simple tips for communicating with people with non-visible disabilities. Focus on the person. 
ask if you can help and listen to the answer. Take time so you and your customer can work out how you're going to communicate and what will make a difference. Do what people ask. They know what will and will not help. And smile if you get told no thank you or just plain no. Congratulations on completing the training. We'd appreciate your feedback. You can complete a short survey by using the links on the next slide. You can find out more information on the inclusive training programme, including the Make Yourself at Home Confident Communications Directory, here.